So my slides that you can see on the assignments page under an exhaustive explanation of CMYK color separation, they will help you understand where all of the colors from our digital files, how they get reduced to these four inks printed at these four different angles. 45 degrees for black, 75 degrees for magenta, 90 degrees for yellow, and 15 degrees or 105 degrees, same thing for cyan. And remember you have this handout for digital coloring primer, all the steps and layers needed for digital coloring. And then the last step would be to make it for professional color separation for printing on a four set lithography press, just like Benjamin Day intended. But if I'm in Photopea and here's my finished poster, how can I use these halftone dots to to make it more interesting, right? You're not required to use them, but you're required to know about them. So if I wanted the kind of retro effects like they use for Wonder Woman here, where they use flat coloring for everything except her skin tone, or here. So there's a few ways in Photopea to do it. One is I'm gonna take my spot illustration, make a duplicate of it and play with that. So I'm gonna do Command J Oh, just did it twice. Then I'm going to rasterize it. And now on that duplicate, I'm going to go to filter. Now the only filter we've used that I don't think is kind of a cheat in some way is the Gaussian blur. That's where you can take focus away. It's very helpful. Now we're going to use one that plays with half toning. So if I go to the filter gallery, and you can do this in Photoshop as well, I want to scroll down and find the one it's under sketch that is halftone pattern. So if I click on halftone pattern, it will give me the option for size and I want to make the size pretty big so I can see these dots. And then the contrast, I want to make the contrast pretty high so I can see those dots, right? This is just going to be for a texturing overlay. And then the pattern, I can use dot and you can do this in Photoshop too. But dots not the only way you can separate color. You can always do it in concentric circles, which is very trippy, it was big in psychedelic design in the 60s. Or you can do it with hatching lines, which is how dot matrix printers did it. But dots is the professional printing way to do it. Then you say, OK, remember this is on a duplicate, right? Does not look great. It's in black and white, it's half toned, and then it's rasterized so it's kind of soft. But then I can use blending modes, right? Like soft light, ooh, to overlay. And then I can play with opacity. And that will give me a nice kind of retro printing effect to it. Now, if I want to be even fancier, I can then take that, double click it, and fill those black dots with a gradient overlay. on its own mode, right? And so with my gradient overlay, maybe I want a gradient that is colorful. Haha. -ha. So it's like another way of playing with full spectrum because you see some of the dots now are layering in warm colors. Some of them are layering in cool colors. Let's see what it's like with and without that layer style. So without it, with it without it, with it. And then I can play with the opacity of that layer style effect as well. So I think that helps my illustration and my post. Now, do I want to apply it to everything? Maybe not. But if I ever do, I can just duplicate and then apply that filter. And then I do it on a duplicate, right? Set it to, I like soft light, some sort of blending mode, then play with the opacity. And what's nice about this is even though I had some halftone texture in there before, now I have it everywhere. So that's gonna help break up that even tone. So now this might be my finished poster. 
Now, if I'm in Photoshop, I might do this. I might take all of these separated angles from CMYK pre-production, print, pre-print production, put them into a group, right? And then what I'm going to do is save this as my PSD out of Photopea, because now I have additional layers of halftone screens. I'm going to close all of these that my, my action generated in order to get this combined CMYK. And then I'm going to open the saved one that I just got out of Photopea. Remember, you don't have to do this, but you need to understand the dots. Right, so here it is. I'm going to open that now in Photoshop. Okay, so now ah, I have... <laughs> There we go. I've got the full Photoshop file, and then I have my group of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black separation. And I'm just going to drag this out and then drag that group onto my poster. Okay. Then I need to arrange it. I need to register it so it fits on. There we go. And then I can play with blending modes for it. Maybe I make it pin light again. And now you'll see layers of these. I can play with its opacity. And this is done with the real color separation. So you can see those dots of cyan, magenta, and yellow. I don't have a lot of black ones, but I have a few, you know, overlapping with the work. Register it to fit. And now I, I like all of that kind of complexity that it has. Like you would see with a magnifying glass on something that's professionally printed. Without that, without these, without this, this is... This is what I had before. Oh, without this one. So once you add that, that understanding of printing, even on something that's pretty flat and graphic, it can start to look a lot more compelling. And now I'm happier with it. All right, so I'm going to save that, and then I'm going to save it to post. So I'm going to save a copy. I'm going to post it to my assignment. I'm just going to save it to the desktop. And I'm going to save it as a JPEG. So now this is my best poster to post right before we do our critique of our posters, our presentation critique. I can close this, don't need it. So there's my new JPEG. I'm going to put it into my folder. This is for assignment six. And then I'm going to put it into Canvas. For assignment six. So you'll see those halftone dots here, and you'll see a link to those slides in the assignment as well, because it's content knowledge you need to have to meet your learning objectives, even if you're not comfortable trying to use it yet. All right, so I'm going to update here. I'm probably posting too much <laughs> into one post. But now let me put that JPEG. Okay. 
And these are using the proper screen angles. Where'd it go? Here it is. All right, and now I have a poster for my final portfolio that I might want to print on the really large paper. And I like that better than this. Even though I didn't make any creative decisions, I just used some of these old printing techniques. Okay. Now, for our presentation critique on our poster, what you're going to do is talk about how you want your viewer to navigate your poster's composition. And so this is what I mean. Let me open up Photoshop again. And let me just make this blank. Just going to fill a layer with just white. And now with my tablet, I'm going to draw what is called the default eye movement of the Western world. <laughs> this default eye movement is where you look at something if there's nothing to look at. The first place you're going to look, where do you think that is? If something's blank. Let's say your friend bought a poster. They said, I spent a thousand dollars on this minimalist poster. I want you to come see it. This is what you see up on their wall. Where do you look? You're going to look at the center first. That's called the international hotspot. But because they spent a thousand dollars, you're not going to just look at the center, realize it's empty and then leave. If you did leave, by the way, you would leave after, off out of the bottom right hand corner. Instead, you would start because we're a Western culture in the upper left hand corner. Like Jacqueline said. And then, if you're going to take it really seriously, you still see nothing. Your eye starts to scan it left to right, top to bottom. And it will speed up as it goes towards the bottom until it leaves out the bottom right. It's actually painful for our eyes to leave out the bottom left of something. So if you try to look at like a poster on a wall, look at it, look at it, and then consciously stop looking at it by moving your eyes out at the wrong direction, it just feels wrong to us because we're so used to reading. That's default eye movement. If I apply that to my poster, that's not quite what happens, right? Because when I look right in the middle, there is something there. And that something catches my attention. It's all the focal point of my creature, especially the eye of my creature. So I want my viewer to take in the creature first, and then after their eye kind of swirls through the creature, it gets angled up through the implied movement of the body pose and of the helmet and of the tilt of the head and of the plume up to the upper left where it wants to go anyway. And then it reads, and then I'm hoping the texture of the background and the edge of the border gets them not to just leave out the bottom, but to kind of swirl around and look at it again before they leave. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to ask you guys with your posters is how do you intend for the eye movement to be navigated for your viewer? And I'm going to show it with the laser pointer as we go through. 